Hello guys, welcome you all to Shunya IAS. In today's current affair class, we are going to discuss the historic moment of soft landing of Chandrayaan 3 on the south pole of the moon. India has achieved a quantum leap in cutting edge space demonstration technologies, which the whole world is applauding. Even the Prime Minister from BRICS summit, which he was attending in South Africa, congratulated the whole ISRO team and to all the citizens of India. It has given India a soft power in space diplomacy. Soft power by that I mean it is an attracting force for all other nations to coordinate and cooperate with India. Moreover, into the space diplomacy, India has already achieved great feat by sharing South Asian satellite. This has been really a great moment for us. But for from UPSC perspective, we have to understand certain facts. What questions, what facts can be asked in the examination in the prelims as well as into the mains. Space technology is evolving like anything. Therefore, India in 2023 launched India Space Policy, which has given way to the private sector, which has opened new avenues for the, for the private se sector, for the end-to-end -end operations. We will look into that matter also. So let's start the class and focus on the prelims facts in the beginning and how other countries are starting their moon missions just like NASA's Artemis, Artemis Accord. Okay, So these things are extremely important for 2024 prelims examination as well as the mains examination. Let us begin the class. As you all can see, India became the first country to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole. Okay. Otherwise, to give soft landing on the moon, India became the fourth country in the entire world. India became the fourth country to have a soft landing on the moon. Okay, But on the South Pole, we will also understand why South Pole so much matters for the entire world. Okay, But from here, let us understand that into the Chandrayaan 2, what ha was the failure? And into Chandrayaan 3, we have you know understood from our failures, learned from the mistakes, and accomplished a great feat. Before going here and talking about this historic achievement, let us understand the beginning of the ISRO's journey. You can see you can see different types of photographs available on the internet that certain parts of the satellite of the rocket are being carried on the bicycle. And now we have reached the moon. India has been capable enough to develop that cryogenic technology. Now we are using GSLV MK3 to reach out to the moon and that is giving us a way for deep space missions also. Guys, we should start the Chandrayaan from the beginning itself, from where the journey started. In 2008, the journey started. Okay, In the month of October 2008, first Chandrayaan mission, Chandrayaan mission 1 was launched from PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. Please understand and mark these words as important for your prelims examination. Sometimes what happens, UPSC will try to confuse you that which satellite was used to launch. Okay, So PSLV, in next two Chandrayaan missions, uh, Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3, we will be using GSLV, MK3 for that matter. Okay, Here PSLV was used PSLV C1 specifically, the objective was to create a 3D atlas of the near side and far side of the moon. Near side and far side of the moon, 3D atlas. Do certain chemical testings, chemical testing and mineralogical testing. What kind of minerals are available on the moon? Understand that space sector is growing in myriads of ways. On one hand, we are understanding the supernova events, okay, gamma radio bursts, so that we can understand the origin of the universe. On one hand, our focus is on those things, okay, James Webb telescope. On the other hand, we are focusing on the sectors of space tourism or finding Goldilocks zones into the space, different inhabitable zones into the space. And on the moon, if human being wants to 
you know create certain space station what kind of minerals are available one of the great findings the success of chandrayaan 1 was to find icy particles icy particles hydroxyls hydroxyls oh minus basically okay hydroxyls oh minus the lifespan was around one year okay approximately uh, 312 days the time span was there and it was a successful mission chandrayaan 1 after that our prowess towards the moon increased what we wanted is not just about preparing a 3d atlas and chemical testing mineralogical testing but we also wanted to send a lander and rover understand what are the concepts over here one thing is called as orbiter orbiting the moon just like irnss okay just like you know orbiting remote sensing satellites are orbiting around the earth similarly an orbiter was there now what we wanted in chandrayaan 2 was not just orbiter but also lander and rover lander and rover so of course students what will happen by increasing the payload by including lander and rover in simple terms understand that How, what what we need to do then then we need a satellite which can carry the heavy payload for that matter gslv mk3 is being used for the deep space missions tomorrow to, towards the mangalyan or by sending into the gaganyan for sending human beings into the space we will be using gslv mk3 okay so here into chandrayaan it was not just orbiter but lander and rover also but lander and rover also what has happened into this orbiter it was a partially successful mission because just before landing on the moon the velocity of the lander could not be controlled precisely for that matter the lander crashed on the moon okay lander crashed that is called as impact it impacted on the moon therefore orbiter was successful enough right now till date also it is working and it is sending different kinds of pictures to the earth and isro is analyzing them but lander and rover could not function therefore it was a partial success you know in 2019 it was launched and there also we found one important thing for your ethics paper you should note this down that how our prime minister consoled and encouraged the chairman of isro k shivan at that time that no worries even if the mission was partial success we will learn from the failures and work hard therefore the saying goes failure is the ladder towards success what isro has demonstrated right now okay now here understand that into the chandrayaan 2 X-ray spectrometer was there. X-ray spectrometer. Okay, definitely for the testings of the different kinds of chemicals. What chemicals can be found here? The lander was called as Vikram, Vikram lander, and rover was called as Pragyan. Pragyan, okay, Vikram and Pragyan but they could not work efficiently because of the impact on the moon surface this you can see as a diagram okay what is happening important point for your examination these kind of infographics you see and ignore sometimes small small informations are given one crucial information that i want to discuss for the prelims examination is just look at the orbit what is happening over here and here we need to compare it with the Luna 25 launched by Roscosmos, Russian Space Agency. This is called as here GTO, okay, geosynchronous transfer orbit. What has happened that you can see different elliptical orbits around the Earth, and apart from that, what has happened that from these orbits it was injected here and then it reached into the gravitational field of Moon. Therefore, these kind of fil fields are if, if, if it is used it is called as slingshot technology it is called as slingshot slingshot technology 
it has the capability of slingshot technology it makes the satellite cost effective it saves a lot of fuel for that matter whereas whereas in the previous slide you will find the trajectory of luna 25 launched by russia okay it was quite straight okay from here to here whereas chandrayaan 3's trajectory you can see therefore it was cost effective whereas it was taking more time it took 42 days around to land on the moon surface whereas luna 25 you know it impacted on the moon it was not a success for that matter our chandrayaan was even heavier because of gslv more payload you understand whereas luna 25 was not carrying any rover our Chandrayaan-3 was carrying a payload of rover as well. Therefore, you can see the lift of mass is 3,900 kgs or 3.9 metric ton. It was 1.75 metric ton itself. Okay. Mission life is 14 days only. Remember guys, mission life is, mission life of rover is 14 days only. After 14 days, it will stop functioning. Mission life for Luna was one year. Even Chandrayaan-1, which was launched in 2008, its mission life was approximately 312 days approximately one year just less than one year okay therefore life of the orbiter is more but lander and rover is not that much that we should understand into this chandrayaan 3 we have achieved the goal of soft landing which was a success these things were all demonstrated into chandrayaan 3 with more advanced technologies we will look into the technologies, what different technologies we have demonstrated and the different kinds of payload that we have carried. Even one payload of NASA was also there into it. So understand, these are crucial points that I am talking about. Okay, The 2008 satellite, Chandrayaan-1, was indigenously manufactured. These uh, satellites are also indigenously manufactured. Uh, it does not carry all the payloads of India, but one payload of NASA as well. What did Chandrayaan-3 wanted to achieve? Let's understand. Lunar quakes, lunar quakes, just like earthquake on the surface of moon, there are lunar quakes also. But if we are looking for inhabitable zones over there, then we have to look for lunar quakes also. I will talk to you about them, that why we are landing on South Pole, to understand better about the lunar quakes, because it has craters over there. Okay lunar quakes then we have to study about the plasma also plasma study we will see different kinds of equipments used for them but understand the perspective what newer technology apart from the chandrayaan 2 what new things we are going to study over there okay and one payload of nasa was also there of course because you know different uh, uh, sun rays are on the higher side therefore thermal thermal properties also we want to understand rover will basically collect different kinds of samples of this from the surface of moon it will have different technologies it will correct it will test and it will give results which will be relayed to the isro which will be relayed to the isro understand how it will uh, it will ba basically function that you can understand if let's assume this is the lander and this is the rover Therefore, rover will do the different testings. It will relay the testing to the lander and lander it, it relay to the satellites, which will relate back to the ISRO. This is how it is going to function. The life of lander and rover is 14 days. In this mission, in this mission, there was no orbiter. Okay. It was a very, very cost effective mission, approximately 610 crores. Uh, many, you know, people are just putting it out. It is less than the ho cost of Hollywood movies also. Okay. The Martian movie costed even quite high. Therefore, India is showcasing that the global south is capable of demonstrating cutting-edge technologies into the space sector also in a cost-effective manner. Okay. Understood how the process of it? Okay. Now, let's move ahead. Why South Pole is the question? Here in this diagram, you can see that most of the missions, you know, Soviet Union, red dots, 
near by equator you can see that near by equator most of the missions because of the favorable conditions over there us okay again china here you can see but this is called the south pole of the moon south pole of the moon first of all it is difficult to understand because moon is tidally locked with the earth understand that moon is tidally locked locked with earth we can only see from the earth one side of the moon far side of the moon we cannot see okay so basically what has happened that there are different lunar polar volatilities lunar polar volatilities into this region because you can see in the diagram itself sun rays are from here and very scarce sunlight is available onto the south pole it has crater deep craters which has diameter approximately 4.2 kilometers shackleton crater is there it could be a question in the examinations shackleton create crater locate and options could be okay mars venus jupiter moon and then the students will be confused you understand what kind of questions upsc is asking these days shackleton crater then what will happen in the news items it was already there students would not have you know studied about them shackleton crater on the south pole of the moon you are getting this point because of the vulnerabilities that challenges this uh, south pole is posing for us for the human beings therefore we want to have an understanding about these uh, positions this these this area is unprecedented unexplored for us till now we want to explore it understand it better moreover there is high probability of more hydrogen into that region more hydrogen into that region why we are interested into hydrogen because with hydrogen two most important chemical compounds are formed which we are interested in one is water one is water and next is ammonia water and ammonia both of them are extremely important for us therefore we are in search of this hydrogen and who knows different kinds of chemical compounds that the rover is going to search for us therefore it will give an elemental and geopolitical advantage for india to reach this feat therefore we reach to the south pole first in the entire world this was our cause for that matter here even the temperatures are you know about approximately minus 230 degrees celsius this because sunlight does not reach this area therefore we want to study and explore and once we have studied them it will help in future deep space missions also future lunar missions also just like cis lunar orbit nasa that has developed cis lunar orbit okay it is just like gps geopositional uh, system that we have right now cis lunar orbit has been developed by nasa for the artemis mission okay so what had been the objectives we have you know in the nutshell captured chandrayaan 1 2 and 3 and discussed what can be asked in your examination for that matter now what had been the objectives first objective that we have achieved is about soft landing capability technology demonstration of safe and soft landing on the specified lunar site specifically the south pole understand there are two statements for the prelims examination one statement india became the first country in the entire world to have a soft landing on the moon wrong this statement is wrong please understand the nuances of it india is not the first country in the entire world to have a soft landing on the moon but if the statement is india is the first country to have a soft landing on the south pole of the moon then it is a correct statement this is how sometimes you know question paper or statement tricks you to demonstrate rover roving on the moon which will carry out in situ chemical analysis of the lunar surface during the course of mobility different experiments will be conducted on the surface of the moon by the rover and this is a technology demonstration we have not just soft landed but by the rover we are collecting samples doing experiments sending out the results and analyzing the data for that matter to conduct in situ scientific experiments different technologies that uh, that are being used from that technological part also questions can be asked therefore i am talking to you about them separately what technologies have been used here the first technology is propulsion module propulsion module it has shape payload remember these acronyms also shape payload 
basically what has happened that you know we have you know measured the earth's diameter we have done everything but from the lunar orbit from the lunar orbit we want to study and measure the polar polarimetric composition of the earth the polarimetric measurements of the earth from the lunar orbit okay therefore we have spectro polarimeter of habitable planet earth this payload will measure the polarimetric distances of the earth from the lunar orbit and therefore we can have an evidence we can match we can verify that evidence also into the lander payloads and then we will have rover payloads therefore i have segregated the technologies into the propulsion system what was the technology into the lander and into the rover understand for your examination this time it is extremely important into the lander chandra surface thermophysics experiment chasti okay to measure the thermal conductivity i told you previously itself thermal conductivity okay how the thermal changes are happening with respect to the sun rays are coming over here the surface how the atmosphere nearby the moon surface it is working okay therefore thermal conductivity one thing we want to understand about the temperature changes on the moon surface instrument for lunar seismic activities i said about lunar quakes for measuring the seismic seismicity around the landing site therefore we can understand if there is any kind of earthquake e even this time the lander was capable enough to change the spot also you you understand at the point of landing the landing site we have decided but in case of any seismic activity or any difficulty we could have changed that position also this time we were that capable langmuir probe langmuir probe to estimate plasma density understand the plasma for prelims these facts you need to remember actually plasma density and its variations because what has happened the plasma rays we also understand that sun rays are coming the corona of the sun that we have studied aditya l1 mission will go and study that but here the plasma near the moon how it is working for that we will understand from the lander laser retro reflector array from nasa i told you one payload from nasa was there this payload is from nasa what nasa is going to study understand the dynamics of moon system okay it will understand different dynamics of the moon system Re radio anatomy of moon bound hypersensitivity ionosphere and atmosphere into your earth also you understand we have ionosphere okay where different ions are there charges are shifting on those ions similarly near the moon also into the atmosphere in the outer atmosphere of the moon how the ions are changing that we want to study this kind of technologies demonstration we are going to perform in the coming 14 days rover rover had two specific technologies or payloads one was alpha particle x-ray spectrometer and another was laser induced breakdowns spectroscope for deriving the elemental composition it will collect different samples from the ground of the from the surface of the moon and it will understand the elemental composition what elements are there you, you just try to understand how difficult why am i calling this a cutting edge technology because even if you collect a sample from the earth itself here and just want to do a ch check that what kind of elements are there into it you have to send the sample to the lab and it will take certain time to understand analyze different kinds of composition over there but into that rover we have sent these technologies to the moon to give way for the composition from the surface from the uh, soil of the moon itself and the vicinity of the landing site that is the technology rover is going to display so these cutting edge technologies are extremely important for us okay it's an inspiration but what is the overall view as a aspiring civil servant we all must understand that this is not where the journey stops this is the moon and beyond we want to go beyond the future missions about gaganyaan mission deep space mission so india has already entered the elite club and become the fourth nation in the entire world to have a soft landing on the moon therefore let's understand about space policy into this uh, space policy into this uh, space policy what we are going to do we are going way to the private sector india has launched the private sector given way to the private sector for end to end 
uh, transaction uh, uh, from launching to the on the earth operations of satellites. So, what will be its implications? What are the key highlights of it? Let us understand. As India's space policy 2023 is being welcomed as a progression towards India's entry into new space age, new space age, okay. It has opened up a new areas of cooperation from different different industries also, okay. Into this uh, space age, first of all, let us understand what is the need of this policy. In two perspectives, we will understand what is the need of this policy and what are the key highlights. What is the need of this policy? First and foremost thing is about India lacks in space economy because you know into the space economy the whole industry is about lags in space economy. The whole economy is approximately about 460 billion dollar industry. But India has a minuscule share of approximately 2 to 3 percent. Okay, making it approximately 9 billion dollar industry. But we understand that through this policy giving entry to the private sector, basically giving entry to the private sector. What will happen? India understands that by giving entry in, uh, to the private sector, we will have this industry about 60 billion dollars by 2030 by 2030 this is our objective first objective second most important need for this policy is that harnessing the full potential of the private sector you know the uh, broadband ott these sectors are evolving like anything you know uh, you can see the examples of uh, spacex blue origin Okay, so these private sector have demonstrated enormous capabilities and hence we want to tap in those sectors and generate a lot of employment opportunities as well. Therefore, harnessing potential, harnessing potential of private sector, okay, whether it be OTT, broadband services, into these sectors by employing giving way to the private sector we can expect a double digit growth double digit growth because we have those technologies our isro is performing therefore why we are not giving leverage to our private sector to participate into it okay third thing is private sector has already revolutionized the space industry falcon 9 of spacex you can see okay therefore what revolution they have done making it more and more cost effective revolutionized in space they have already revolutionized the need most important need is about atmanirbhar bharat in space sector Atmanirbhar Bharat in space sector. We have you know the different transponders that are uh, sending TV signals to our homes for broadcasting different channels. You know more than half of those transponders belong to foreign entities. Therefore by giving leverage to the private sector we can save more than half a billion of dollar that is going from the India to different nations out there. Therefore, by giving way to the Atmanirbhar Bharat, make in India. Right now what has happened into this private sector, what right now is happening that this sector has a kind of monopoly of ISRO. Private sector has only working, has been only working like vendors or manufacturers of small equipments that are being procured by the ISRO programs. But what we want is that ISRO should shift and rationalize its role towards more cutting edge technologies, towards deep space missions and give way for private sector for the technologies that have already been demonstrated and share those technologies with private sector. 
this is how we want to create a conducive environment for the development of private sector therefore this is the need and we want to tap in that space economy also we want to generate employment we want to make india and atmanirbhar india into the space sector as well so let's understand what are the key highlights what had been the key highlights first thing is creation of certain bodies first body that 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 is being created is in space okay in space Wo what is there it is about indian space promotion and authorization center indian space promotion and authorization center because we want a framework that is more predictable and more reasonable for governance also for the space governance also and it will give a way for single window clearance single window clearance because you understand different kinds of licenses will be required for the private sector to venture into it and for that we need a body that will be giving single window clearances just like our startup india scheme single window clearances for different kinds of startups environmental clearance this clearance that clearance for that matter we need this kind of body for for having a, a predictable framework and single window clearances moreover it will share different kinds of inf information with respect to the ngs non governmental entities those who are venturing into the space programs second body that is being created is about national space india limited national space india limited it is the job is for the commercialization of space commercialization of space previously as i told you the role of private sector was limited only for by being the vendor or manufacturer of manufacturer of small parts itself now the nsil will give way for end to end manufacturing as well as operations leading the project from ground totally into the space and operating from the earth itself the operating capabilities will also be given to the private sector by the nsil commercialization of space department of space it will act as a nodal body for the coordination and cooperation among international space agencies you understand different bodies are being created this is called diversification into the space institutions now we are not just limited towards isro we are expanding into that sector department of space will be the nodal agency for international cooperation into the space sector in collaboration with ministry of external affairs because as we all understand this policy is not an isolated policy into the space it is also a diplomatic initiative where we need the understanding and collaboration with respect to the ministry of external affairs which is looking into our foreign policies fourth thing is about rationalizing the role of isro rationalizing the role of isro now what should happen that isro will be slowly transitioning out of the existing practice you know out of the existing practice of solely focusing on the space programs now what will happen it will be just focusing on the cutting edge technologies developing new technologies and giving way for different kinds of private sectors this is called the rationalization of the isro how it will benefit india it could be a, your interview question how it is going to benefit india you understand that state exchequer does not have that much of cost for all the space projects uh, into our infrastructure projects also we have seen the uh, public private participation therefore government should act like a facilitator where the private sector cannot spend much therefore isro will be focusing on long term projects which has long gestational period but small profit oriented projects for that we want private sector to step in and invest money become profitable uh get more jobs and capture more and more space economy for that matter this will give strategic advantage also to the india you are getting the point so from here let's move on to the aspect of space diplomacy as you can see the cartoon over here 
दिस कार्टून वॉज यू नो प्रिंटेड इन टू द न्यूयॉर्क टाइम्स न्यूयॉर्क टाइम्स हियर यू कैन सी दैट सर्टन यूरोपियन पीपल आर स्टडिंग अबाउट यू नो मार्स मिशन एंड वेर एज इंडियंस आर नॉकिंग ऑन द डोर विथ काउज and that was a mockery on the indian capability to achieve anything into the space achieve anything into this space new york times apologized apologized for it in 2017 itself okay and now india has all proven that into the space diplomacy india is into the elite club of the world now let's understand what is space diplomacy it involves leveraging space science and technology basically space diplomacy involves leveraging space science and technology to further its foreign policy goals and also push and strengthen its space capabilities basically leveraging space technology to further its foreign policy goals therefore space sector and ministry of external affairs works in tandem sometimes and it is also boosting our soft diplomacy soft diplomacy understand here two perspectives are important for space diplomacy that you have to understand and use as arguments in your answers also one perspective one perspective into this space diplomacy is that we are using space technology space technology for our foreign policy goals uh, on the other hand on the contrary you have to understand that you know space sector has a dual usage it has it is a strategic sector as well you know for the military purposes also it could be used it is totally a new area for all the human beings on the planet earth and how this area will be explored depends on our collaboration cooperation diplomacy treaties laws frameworks that will be discussing at the international level on the different platforms therefore understand that space diplomacy is not just about leveraging its technology to further the foreign policy goals but as an agenda to be on the table to discuss how the space diplomacy should be done you are getting the point not just about foreign policy as a foreign policy our first objective is to be on the agreements and decide different frameworks for space diplomacy D find different frameworks for space diplomacy through international agreements therefore therefore let's understand we will go little bit deeper into it it has two ways because of the militarization of space also some things can happen we have two important organizations we have two important organizations looking into the matter multilateral organization okay this is united nations okay uh, see C O P O U S. Okay, this is basically a committee for peaceful uses of outer space. United Nations Committee for Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. Here, different agreements are there. Okay, just like Outer Space Treaty, Outer Space Treaty, how it should be used. where we have discussed about demilitarization of space arms and ammunition nuclear weapons should not be sent on the space that can harm the satellites of different nations moon agreement okay similarly another body is about united nations office office of outer space so understand these two important bodies over here okay now let's understand what are the challenges for the global south in the nutshell i'll be telling you in the class i discuss it in detail but in the nutshell just understand what are the challenges and what are the india's prerogatives right now into the space diplomacy one crucial challenge is about space sovereignty 
in challenge if i talk to you about it challenge speed understand in, if i talk about challenge uh, india belongs to global south okay south asian country now most of the work that we are doing with the satellites is about you know uh, using remote sensing satellites for the agriculture water resource management telemedicine okay education into these sectors but there are certain strategic importance areas also but the global south is mostly using it for them whereas the north global north whether it be european nations or american nations or russian nations for that matter they are using more of it for the strategic advantage over there okay the challenge is to understand and develop a long term strategy one challenge is lack long term strategy okay although india is having but overall global south is not having that strategy therefore india has to represent the voice of the global south that we are doing in the presidency of g20 as well another challenge is space sovereignty now there are certain mature space programs into countries like mexico and pakistan also but for the cutting edge technology and for the different kinds of services of the equipments they are dependent on the first world countries or the developed nations therefore it is killing their space sovereignty in the coming future okay third thing is the priorities these priorities are not balanced right now we all understand that that space junk could be created kessler kessler's effect okay space debris are there just like the pollution we have created on the earth and right now to mitigate the carbon dioxide to decarbonize the earth we are talking about cbd are combined but differentiated responsibilities similarly tomorrow most of the junk has been created by the developed nations now if we will be having less space into the orbit and we are going to plan that now the satellites will be launched in the coming 40 50 years down the line then who is going to take the responsibility of clearing those space junk because right now global south is not using those orbits for their strategic purposes they are only using it for their needs these are the challenges right now we have to understand and deal with them lack of strategic approach basically now about india let's understand a little bit now india has been furthering different kinds of space diplomacy because of the successful launches of the isro what we have been furthering is neighborhood first policy one achievement is neighborhood first policy this we have read in international relations neighborhood first policy gujral doctrine we have studied okay now how we are doing that gsat 9 gsat 9 or south asian satellite for south asia we are providing a communication satellite we are also giving to the sark nations the facilities of irnss okay the navigational satellite that we have launched therefore the routes that india has generated from the success of its uh, space missions are being shared the the prime minister of india yesterday showcased that vasudhav kutumbakam has been the objective of india's g20 presidency and it has been very much related with the space diplomacy of india the fruitions that have you know been generated are being shared among the neighborhoods and globally the nasa's payload also being carried out by indian satellite okay so therefore india's soft power soft power diplomacy by sharing the fruits of success of different developments into the space sector now these has been the developmental aspects now let's understand it is very important that we counter china how we are going to counter china because you know that tibet is that very high plateau from there satellite mon monitoring sky monitoring becomes very easy 
therefore into the tibet region the china has satellite tra tracking centers that can not only track indian satellites but sometimes can it can blind them also therefore by in when india is launching such missions india is showcasing that it can counter china as well like just like india has demonstrated a sat anti satellite technology and became the fourth nation into that club as well okay so countering china it is very important as and a new area of cooperation now understand how does it differ permanent five member united nations you understand there india has not been sitting on the same table the permanent five members have veto powers but this new area of space where india is becoming fourth nation first nation sometimes right now we have seen india has become first nation to soft land on the south pole of the moon now india is already into the elite club the powerful club and therefore our uh, sovereignty and space Uh, diplomacy are at the top notch positions we are at the bargaining table okay so these has been some little pointers for the space diplomacy and how you should be understanding the space policy and the success of chandrayaan mission this is the way you should be rejoicing it let's understand the prelims question let's solve this question consider the following statements with reference to the chandrayaan 3 okay it aims to demonstrate end to end capability in safe landing and roving on the lunar surface it has demonstrated it will be launched by gslv mark 3 launch vehicle it has been launched yes india was first india it was india's first attempt to soft land on the south pole of the moon which of the following statements are correct please pause the video and uh, tell me the answer in the comment box which answer did you mark guys understand these two statements are correct but it was india's first attempt no it was not first attempt there the confusion lies it was it made india the first country in the entire world but it was not india's first attempt but it was india's second attempt okay chandrayaan 2 was the first attempt to soft land on the moon therefore correct statement should be 1 and 2 only UPSC has asked the question in 2016 discuss the india's achievements in the field of space science and technology how the application of this technology now understand here you can use this deeper technologies that i have talked about that lunar quakes okay thermal spectrometry helped india in its socio economic development this has been the question in th into the interviews as well that whether we should be investing money into the space tech or whether we should be investing more money into the welfare schemes of the government now you can relate that how these schemes are being benefited the farmers are even even being benefited by weather forecasting satellites okay so you can correlate between both of them and india's sovereignty the top notch india's national security the top notch that these benefits india is getting from the historic moments into the space technology thank you guys let's meet in the next class